And let's welcome in Kelly right now. She is with us from Indiana. Kelly, first, we want to say congratulations on the new position. Was this something you were seeking out? Was this a goal that you had? It actually wasn't. You know, I've been asked this question quite a bit, and I'll say that I was really busy running my own franchise, running the Indiana Fever. Um, you know, I hadn't really thought a lot about the NBA in terms of that would be the next step for me. And, and I was approached by Kevin Pritchard, the president of basketball operations, and asked me if I thought this would be something I would be interested in. And um, we started talking about it. And before you know it, uh, here I am. So what will be your role with the team? So he's got a great staff already, obviously Chad Buchanan, the general manager, and Peter Dinwiddie. Um, I'll be coming in and joining them with uh, evaluating talent, looking at the roster, building a championship culture, looking at really all the operational procedures of putting together a you know, winning franchise. I mean, there's, it's such a great history here in Indiana. Um, you know, I, I just, I'm really grateful to Kevin and to Herb for this opportunity to come in and bring the experience that I've gained over 19 years in the WNBA of putting my teams together, um, you know, and see what I can do to help this team take it up another notch. Kelly, you mentioned the experience that you have doing what you did with the WNBA. You know, one thing that's surprising about all of this in your ascendancy is that it took so long. It's been over four decades since we have had a women assistant general manager in the, w in the NBA. Do you think sports leagues are doing all they can to give women a clear path to the type of position that you're in now? Well, if you look at the age of the NBA and you look at the age of the WNBA, I mean, the NBA has a 50-year head start. So you're talking about two generations of women and men who have not really been on the same parallel path. And, and that's okay. That's just where we are as, as a society. And I think now we have, I'm a first-generation Title IX product, the opportunity to play basketball, then the opportunity to work in sports, then the opportunity to run my own franchise in the WNBA, which, by the way, is the WNBA. So a lot of it is modeled after the NBA. There are so many procedures and processes that I learned along the way. Had great mentors here with Donnie Walsh, Larry Bird. I mean, you know, this, it's a generation of learning and a generation of an opportunity to be at the highest level of women's sports. And now we have this next generation athlete, myself as a, as a front office person, to look at other opportunities, and that would be the NBA and perhaps other sports. What will you take from those 17 years uh, running the Indiana Fever to this particular position, and how are those positions different for you? Well, they're actually very similar. You know, when I started sh swapping stories with Chad and with, with Kevin, you know, we were laughing, talking about how all of the things that, that you, you go to sleep at night and wake up in the morning thinking about building your team, how can you get better? You know, our job as front office management is, is to always get your team better, to always try to play for a championship. I mean, I, I had the opportunity to not only do that, but work across the business sector as well. So getting a great scope and a great idea of what it takes to run an operation uh, from a sports franchise and that skill set that comes with it. And then also negotiating contracts, working with agents, um, signing players, signing coaches, you know, all of those things go into building um, a great franchise. And that's the, that's the kind of experience that I was able to get through doing that through the WNBA. What would you want to tell women right now to get to what they need to know, the one or two things they need to do to get to where you are right now? Well, I, I, first and foremost, you know, again, I, I wasn't necessarily seeking this out. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, because I think we now have a generation of young women who, who can start thinking about aspiring to work in the NBA or other, other leagues. You know, we have this great league, the NBA, that really fosters a culture of inclusion and diversity and diversified thought and progressive thinking. And, and I think the, you know, the sky's the limit for young women who want to take that next step. I, and if I serve as an example of that, I think that's great. And, and uh, you know, I encourage any, any young woman who's out there that looks at sports as an opportunity and as an avenue that they should do their best. You know, I think just work really hard and, and, uh, and have a lot of confidence in what you're doing because you know, I'm an example of I didn't really dream this, but it was an opportunity that I felt was really important. And I love the game, and I, and I just feel honored and, and blessed to have this opportunity. Well, you are such a great example and a role model, I'm sure. It's great for women to have you to look up to in your position. And again, congratulations, and we hope we'll, you'll join us again soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me.